My name is Father Michael Stahl. I am the spiritual director for Hope's Garden. And today I'd like to talk to you about anger. Many of our emotions that we have are really not of value in the sense of having a moral value. They just are emotions. And that's okay. It's part of our human makeup that we do have emotions. I noticed that even some of the animals have emotions. Sometimes you're feeling kind of sluggish. Sometimes you're feeling anxious. Sometimes you're feeling angry. Whatever the emotion is, in and of itself, it is neutral. It is neither good nor bad. Try to think of the creatures of the world. Are any of the creatures of the world bad in and of themselves? Well, no, they were all created by God. Therefore, they are good. But some of them I like and some of them I don't like. Not crazy about mosquitoes and skunks. So relatively, I think of those as bad. If I saw a skunk, I'm running away. But it doesn't mean that a skunk is bad in and of itself. Same thing with an emotion. An emotion in and of itself isn't good or bad. Some of them I like and some of them I don't like. But they're all essentially part of my makeup, neither good nor bad. The question really comes to what will I do with this emotion? I like to think of emotions as an alarm going off in a building. Perhaps it's a fire alarm. And if the fire department were to show up, would the fire department find as its primary mission to turn off the alarm? No, the alarm was completely secondary to the cause of the alarm going off, whether it's smoke or fire. The fire department is looking for the fire, not for the alarm. So when my emotions take off, something's triggering that emotion. Something is causing the alarm to go off. And that something is requiring attention at this time. So we have to find out what that is and not treat simply the emotion. So unfortunately, there's a lot of people in the world who through uh, use of medications and perhaps even distractions, even recreational drugs, uh, attempt to control their emotions. And they make it all about their emotions. Their whole life is emotions. I've even noticed that some religious movements really evaluate their prayer life based on how they feel. If I feel on fire with my faith, my faith must be good. If I don't feel on fire, if I feel nothing or, or sadness, something's wrong with my spiritual life. These are not truths. They're just emotions, but they point to a deeper truth. And does it mean that I should be paying attention to my faith life or to whatever else is going on in my life? Absolutely. Pay attention to those things because they're causing the emotions which set off an alarm. But in and of themselves, they're neither good nor bad. Now, this being said, it is very common for us to mistake anger as a sin. Why? Because it's a, a negative emotion. It's not one that we really like. We don't like anger. We don't like when somebody gets angry at us. Why? Because it feels threatening to us or they stop listening or they are now trying to force a perspective that I don't accept. And so all of these things happening also have the, the threat of ending our future positive relationship. So there's all kinds of reasons why we don't like anger, but it doesn't mean that it's bad in and of itself. Sometimes it's appropriate to be angry. Sometimes it's appropriate for the other person to be angry, and sometimes it's appropriate for me to be angry. And sometimes it's, it's not appropriate, but it doesn't mean that the anger is the problem. What it means is there is a deeper issue or the way that I respond to my anger isn't appropriate. Anger in and of itself is okay, but how I respond to it or what the deeper issue is, is much more important than the actual feeling. My goal isn't just, you know, imagine if you came to my church and I preached homilies. And the whole idea of my homily was to make you feel good so you came back next week. Uh, this would be a form of entrepreneur. I would be a marketing guy. I would simply want your money and I hope you put it in the collection basket. What would you think about a, a preacher, a, a priest, a minister who did that? You would say this is an abuse of a power. This is a, a misunderstanding of your role. My role is not to make you feel good. My role is to bring you closer to Christ. 
And sometimes people like what I say and sometimes they don't. And that's kind of how I know I'm doing a good job. Because if they all like what I'm saying, I begin to think, am I just patting people on the back so that they put in the collection basket? I have to tell the truth. And the truth evokes emotions, either very joyful or very angry, but I don't care either one, I'm making a difference. And what I'm hoping happens in that emotion is that then you look to the cause. Why do I feel this way? And what do I do with this feeling? Now, one of the grave sins is called wrath. Wrath is when I feel anger, I now give myself permission to release my anger on someone else. I belittle them. I no longer take responsibility for the words or the actions that I'm about to do. I throw things, I have a tantrum. I get loud so we don't listen to the other person. I talk about them behind their back so they're no longer, so I can undermine their sense of support. These things are called wrath. That is a sin. This is now belittling the other person and not being respectful. However, being angry isn't the sin. What I do with the anger can be a sin, but not necessarily. So let me give you an example of a time in which anger could be very legitimate. Let's imagine for a moment that you're in a grocery store and there's a father and he's with his child who is kind of crying and saying, please, daddy, can I have a piece of candy? Please, daddy, can I have? And he's getting very annoyed and impatient. And he turns around and he smacks the child. And welling up within you is anger. Good. That's an injustice you just saw. This is an improper way to treat a little child. This is not equal powers. He ends up using his great mass to control and submit a child who might be misbehaving and might need a correction and might need somebody to give more attention to. But he took a route that is only going to lead to pain and suffering and probably continual abuse. And this is what he did in public. Imagine what happens outside. So the anger that wells up inside is absolutely appropriate. Now do something about it. Now what do you do? Do you grab a baseball bat and begin to pummel this guy? That's wrath. That's not what you're going to do. What you do with the anger now is you have to channel it to say, what is the appropriate action? Anger is pushing you into action. What do you do with that anger? First, you find the root of the anger, and then you figure out how to respond because of the anger. What's the root? There's an injustice. This man is using violence on his child. His child is, uh, you know, I mean, who knows what they're doing behind closed doors. This is in public. This child needs somebody to advocate for him or her. And so you, you decide that's what you need to do. You need to stop this man from using violence on this child. This child needs protection. And it wells up as anger to give you a push. You are called to intervene. How do you intervene? You grab a bat and pummel the guy, of, of course, that would be wrath. That's not what we're called to do. We do not meet injustice with another form of injustice. We do not meet violence with this kind of violence in return. You have to protect the child. So you have to be a little bit creative. What's the next step to do? Is it to confront the man immediately? Is it to take down that information? Is it to call the police? Is it to get others involved? What is it that's the next step? And of course, you'll have to use your own judgment to figure out what the next step is. But the anger has prompted you to do something. And now you have to decide what that something is and not just let the anger decide, I feel like wrath. That's not acceptable. But the anger did say there's a root to it, an injustice, and there's a, a response, find the proper response. Now, in the case of uh, many of the people at Hope's Garden, Perhaps some of the anger comes from uh, victimization. There's some things that have happened in your past where somebody was using you, lying to you, abusive verbally or physically. And when those memories come into your mind, sometimes it creates fear. That was what the person was intending to do, to condition you so that you will behave the way that they have predetermined, which is not good. You don't want to be 
formed and shaped and conditioned by fear. As you are released from this fear, as you find yourself now more independent and not accepting of that kind of relationship, anger is going to come up. It's normal that it comes up because when you think about those situations, it no longer controls you. Instead, you feel like you're watching a movie of somebody else. And when you see this person being abused, being victimized, you now have this anger well up in you, do the same thing. What's the root? That's unjust. There is something wrong with this situation. The way that person treated me was wrong. Name it for what it is. The anger is welling up because of a good reason. Second, what do I do with this? Well, I'm not gonna let it continue. This is huge. Because of the conditioning that has happened for a long period of time of having some sort of verbal or, or physical abuse, we are conditioned to merely accept this plight. You do not have to accept that. When there is an injustice, you at some point need to find the strength to get away from that, to change the situation. Whether that's a separation, uh, counseling, something needs to intervene because this is not acceptable. And the anger welling up is now telling you, you got to change this. Now, sometimes we want to turn it right to wrath. I hope something bad happens to that person or to call them names or to be cruel to them in the midst of a, a divorce proceedings or something like that, or talk to the children so that the other person is now diminished. These are normal desires that pop in but you have to go through it as if you're just like in the other scenario. Are these wrath or an appropriate situation? How do you know when it's appropriate? Well, justice itself is very difficult to define. I like to think of injustice as we're going down the road in a bus filled with a bunch of bags up on the, the bag rack and we hit a pothole and the bags go everywhere. We gotta get the bags back in the bag rack, put things back in order. It's not merely, I wanna hurt this person because they hurt me. I want to put my life and the world around me in order. So anger turned to wrath is really just an eye for an eye. I just wanna to do to them what they did to me. I want them to feel what I felt. But justice is, I want things back in order in the order they were meant to be. And so all of my actions that follow must be to bring order to my life. I need to protect myself. I need to protect the people around me. If possible, I would like to change the other person, but I will not change them using their techniques of conditioning somebody through fear. That's not what I'm gonna do because it was wrong for them to do it. It's wrong for me to do it. That's wrong. I will not do it that way. If they want to have a conversion of heart, if they want to go to their own counsel for that, fantastic. What can I do to pressure you to do that? But I will not use fear and I will not use violence to get you there. Now, sometimes there are moments in which violence does kind of creep in. You could imagine in the scenario with the man who hit the child, if you were to say, don't hit that child, and he instead say, look, you got me into trouble and raised his hand ready to hit that child again, it might be appropriate to tackle him, to hold him back from doing more harm to this child. That might be appropriate. You have to use your judgment to figure out when it's appropriate. The goal is not to make him hurt so he feels the same pain as the child. The same thing in this situation. If you find yourself inside your home and you're feeling threatened, Perhaps a level of violence is required to protect yourself. But remember the goal is not to say, I want you to feel pain so that you understand my pain. That's not a goal, that's wrath. The goal is I need to get things in order and that means sometimes I have to protect myself. I gotta get out of here. And if that means that I gotta back the car up and scratch your car on the way out because you're trying to block me, I can understand that. But you better not do it just because, you know, I had plenty of room, but I decided to slide on next to his car so that his car got scratched, so that he feels pain, so that I've done to him what he's done to me. That's wrath. And I understand that difference. Anger is just an emotion. 
and it's neutral in and of itself. And it's a negative emotion. I don't like it, but it doesn't mean it's bad. Look to the root cause and then look to the proper option of response and be very careful not to use wrath.